Hello guys, my name is Russian Badger, and over the weekend, I just could not make up my mind. I started out, I tried to play Stalker, right? And then I thought to myself, this game makes me want to play Ghost Recon. And then I started playing Ghost Recon, and then I thought, you know what, this makes you want to play Splinter Cell. And then I went on this Splinter Cell rampage, and I ended up playing Bad Company 2 today. And I have to share this moment with you. Okay, so I get the bush monster, right? He just happens to be lurking on a rock. But just listen to the sound of this second guy. Just wait for... Oh, Lord. oh, man, right in the grill, right in the grill. Oh, my gosh. I I had not anticipated hitting that gentleman in the face, and even though I hit him in the face like the soft tissue part of his mouth, it still made a sound like I hit him in a helmet, and it... Oh, God. I, I don't know why I found that so humorous, but I, I found it very humorous. I'm not sure why, but back again to my sort of gaming... I wouldn't even call it a fiasco, but okay. So I started with Stalker, and then I kind of felt like Ghost Recon after playing Stalker. Then while I was playing Ghost Recon, I thought, you know, Splinter Cell would be more fun than this. So I beat Splinter Cell, then I went on to Double Agent, and then Chaos Theory, and then Pandora tomorrow, and... Skadoosh! Oh man, that's not a good place to be. The Attic, and this guy is not in a better position at all. The VSS is very good at close range, despite the fact it only has a 20-round magazine. However, it is very deadly due to the... Not only the bullet damage, but just the, how stealthy you are. It usually takes them a second or two to figure out exactly where you are as soon as you're firing these. I believe it's subsonic. If I'm not mistaken, I know a lot of you gun buffs have some serious stats on that kind of stuff. It's not a clip, it's a magazine. It's not a magazine, it's a drum. It's not a VSS, it's a VSK. Oh, whatever. Okay? Whatever. I don't even think a VSK exists, but you think... I think you get the point at at what I'm actually trying to say. But I'm trying to finish my Splinter Cell story and it's not very... <laughs> the gameplay isn't really operating in accordance with that goal of I want to discuss Splinter Cell but everything in the game is so exciting though. Okay. So I started playing Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. Today. I know that doesn't make any sense at all. Okay. So Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. I was playing today. If that makes any sense at all. And I have to tell you, if you ever get the opportunity to play Pandora tomorrow, whether it's today, I mean, you can always play Pandora tomorrow, tomorrow, right? But I have to tell you, it has the goofiest dialogue I think I have ever heard in a video game ever. Like, I think the second mission and the third mission where there's those two guards near that, like, subway car, it's stuff like this. It's stuff like the characters will just randomly start talking and be like, how long do you think it'll take him to find the Frenchman? What do you mean, Frenchman? We're all Frenchmen here. Oh, no, I mean the French Frenchman. Like, all the dialogue is so goofy. I just don't understand how guards that are just sitting around doing nothing all day can be that enthusiastic about certain things that don't even pertain to them. I just, I find it really humorous and I laugh at instances and at certain points in time in the game where I shouldn't be laughing. Just. You know, this is supposed to be serious dialogue between two different characters, like exchanging of words, that is not supposed to be funny, but I find myself just laughing. And, you know, guys, I think you guys definitely know that I have a real problem with that. You guys are probably aware that I have a real problem with that. Like, sometimes even in public, I'll just start laughing when people start speaking a, a language other than English, and I have no idea why. I don't know if I'm just that immature, but that guy got it directly in the chest, and I don't even know if I want to continue with that point. Like, I've heard... I think the worst are, I think, Spanish, German, Japanese, I think uh, Cantonese is also another bad one, but I just like start laughing, and I have no idea why. And yet again, it's very, very good, but that 20-round magazine can just destroy you if you don't correctly aim your hip fire. And I know you're saying, oh, aim your hip fire. There's no reticle for that with the VSS because obviously it's a recon. And oftentimes, well, at least in Bad Company 2, there's no crosshairs. Even, you know, those super loose crosshairs for recon. And I finally get taken down after a 17 kill streak with that VSS. It's only because I, I honestly think the reason that I can get and people in general can get much higher kill streaks with the VSS or the Vintores, whatever you like to call it, is just because it's so much harder to find the guy. Sure, if you're firing like an M16 or a saw, yeah, you have a lot of killing power, probably arguably just as much killing power as you do with the VSS, but it's, oh my god, muzzle flash, look at that guy in the window. And it's, you're asking to get like an M95 right in your, 
that bullet will just go right into your helmet immediately. Once you start firing the saw or the M16 or any kind of... I wouldn't even necessarily say suppressed because I can definitely fire some of the guns and some, some of the regular automatic rifles and not be seen as easily as, like, the saw. Like, sure, if you're firing a saw or an MG3 for in a stationary position for more than five seconds, you're probably going to get shot in the face if the other team has any kind of legitimate snipers at all or recons. And as you can see, it's... It's not difficult to master, but I can easily say that a VSS is probably more difficult to use than a regular assault rifle. Yeah, sure, like, a lot of these shots are just lucky, and I get taken down by a UAV here. I get a string of just really, really weird deaths. Like, obviously the level 4 is always going to be on the UAV. The lower ranked players usually like to... Oh, what's this miniature helicopter that can control like it's Halo? Oh, okay. Or, I guess that's more of a Call of Duty type thing, but whatever. I... I always just laugh at killstreaks, like, oh. if I could discuss killstreaks with you, I would, but I would like to concentrate on the VSS because there's a point up here where you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in terms of the spread is the only issue that will ever sort of frustrate you with the VSS, and that's simply because it, if it were, like, if the spread were laser beam accurate, it wouldn't be balanced at all. This thing would just tear everybody apart, even with the... 20 round magazine it's still extremely good at almost all ranges if you know how to use it correctly in terms of one shot one shot one shot as in tap tap it's not like an assault rifle you can't just pull off the over and over and over an 94 avacon just spam it everywhere and at, the, at those ranges where the entire guy's body is exposed it's a lot simpler but where they only expose their heads and it's kind of difficult like okay you'll see up here this little booth up here is a perfect example. You can see right there, those, those are sort of like a fledgling or like a little component of what I'm talking about. See how I am right on him right now, but I only hit him with one of those shots and I somehow committed suicide? That's what you will oftentimes experience with the VSS in terms of if you start firing and you get really... I don't know if I would call it anxious because I know a lot of you... Badger is such a Carl, dude. Why don't you just actually learn how to use it like us real pros? Oh, MLG Pro is using the... It's not even that difficult to use, but I would definitely say that... Right. If you start firing and you think that you can just get really ambitious and finish the guy off before he goes around the corner like you can with an assault rifle, you're going to have a bad time and it's not going to work. It's, I wish I could communicate it to you a little bit better. And Sure, if Milos is running out in the open and the recon is always exposing his entire body to the shots, obviously the spread is going to work out in my favor, but... You will see a lot of instances where I am directly on the guy. Like my reticle is right on him, but because the spread is so radical, oftentimes I just don't end up getting him. Even though, and yes, I do get taken down by a, some recon or bush monster sitting really far away with the 12 times M95, which is always a killer weapon to use, right? But this is my favorite part. When you can lurk in places that are not just straight up you know, oftentimes a lot of the, the majority of players, at least in Bad Company 2, and a lot of these servers that they play on now, it seems like they are just conventional attackers. We run towards the defenders who are lurking directly in front of us and we die. That's, it seems like a lot of these kids were sort of subscribing to that sort of gameplay. And I like this so much more if you can get out on the flanks and use the VSS and how suppressed, I don't know if it's, yet again, I don't know if it's suppressed or it's subsonic ammo or exactly how you would call the quietness or the stealth feature of the VSS but regardless just not being able to detect to be detected as soon as you're firing everywhere it's so deadly it's so deadly and it's I thought the guy had it gone elsewhere you know that little point in time where you think to yourself ah oh, he's probably forgotten about me you know I already hid he's probably looking in a different direction but that guy was sitting there waiting for me so I just didn't master the psychology of the opposing team's star play I guess that's just what happens and even though they get it set, this is not Battlefield 3. Obviously, you can't... I think Battlefield 3 is a lot better in terms of if you arm a charge. Even if you have zero tickets, they have to defuse. I think that's a better feature. But, alas, as the game ended, I was kicked from the game for hacks. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. So, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. And yet again, I like to think that at least the other, or whoever the add-in was, or whether that was Vokick, whatever, at least they were considerate enough to wait until the end of the game before they kicked me. All right, so I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. For your bonus clip, it is going to be... 
I so, for so I found it pretty humorous. I don't know if you guys will find it humorous. Just like l other people speaking foreign languages and stuff in Splinter Cell, I I find it funny, and I don't think anybody else will find it funny. But the first guy, I did, I just went on this streak, this two man streak of like direct impacting with a grenade launcher. The first guy, it didn't explode, like it didn't detonate. He, I got direct, he got direct impacted. The second guy, it like blows up in his neck. It's weird, but. Hopefully you'll know what I mean as soon as you see it. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und later.